In the not-so-distant future, Japan's economy has collapsed, and it is excluded from the G7 group of the most developed countries in the world. The unemployment is at 10%, which is an all-time high since World War II. Several large conglomerates have gone bankrupt, and many others are believed to follow suit in the coming months. This is because over 60% of the population in Japan is elderly, and only 10% of the population lies between the age group of 16 to 30. To combat this problem, Prime Minister Washida has come up with a plan. With the help of a cabinet member and renowned scientist, Taira Kiyoshi, he has designed a futuristic AI called Solon. Now, since old politicians are corrupting the country for their own benefit, PM Washida wants Solon to take care of Japan. But first, he wants an experimental trial in a small city of 150,000 people. The entire project is known as Project Utope AI, or simply UA. Solon will have a lot of responsibilities. Being a powerful AI, she can measure the happiness index of people People, check their health status, suggest solutions to political problems, make elaborate designs for new projects, and so on. She has the database of virtually everything in UA City, which is stored throughout three humongous towers. However, there is a small catch. Although the AI can suggest and help with a lot of things, she cannot decide or come to a conclusion. This is where humans with actual feelings are required. Hence, PM Washida and Solon have shortlisted four young leaders who can make Project UA successful. The new mayor of the city is revealed to be a 17-year-old schoolboy named Maki Aran. As expected, the announcement shocks a lot of people, but the scientist Tyra claims that young people have clearer vision and that their minds are pure. They're also addicted to Fortnite and TikTok, so be careful. Hence, they should be given a chance to govern the UA city. Maki himself claims that he only has to make decisions. The rest will be done by the AI Solon herself. At last, PM Washida declares that Tyra will be overseeing the for youths so that the city will be governed smoothly. In the next scene, we are introduced to a fun-loving 17-year-old girl named Sagawa Sachi. She appears to be a huge fan of Maki and is excited by the news of him becoming the mayor of UA City. As she is scrolling through the internet, suddenly, she gets a message from Maki himself. He is sent a link, and when Sachi clicks on it, they both get connected via a video call. Wasting no time, Maki asks her to be his personal assistant, which she accepts gladly. Here, we get to know that both of them were part of a Facebook group, and that's how they met. Although Maki had never seen or talked to Sachi before, he was impressed by her reports on the economy. Later, an over-the-moon Sachi breaks the news to her parents and explains that they have been called to live in UA City. They will have a luxurious apartment, high-paying jobs, and free healthcare. Her parents, who have lived in Tokyo all their lives, are skeptical about the plan, but when Sachi goes on a 10-minute long rant, they agree. The movie then cuts to three months later, where UA City is formally inaugurated. Sachi also also arrives there with her family and gets taken aback to see the technological advancements. They are each given a pair of smart glasses, with the help of which they can read other people's descriptions, use the internet, access the city's database, watch informative videos, and so on. Shortly after, her family is transported to their new accommodation, while Sachi is picked up by Tyra. On the way, he introduces her to different parts of the city and also briefs her on some of her responsibilities. She will have to assist Maki in all the decisions he makes. Should I pick the Goku? the Vegeta skin. Should I put a filter on this selfie? After a while, they reach an ancient looking building, which surprisingly is very modern on the inside. It is revealed to be the new parliament for Maki and his cabinet members. Sachi is left speechless to see her idol for the first time. Then, without further ado, the first cabinet meeting commences. Maki, being a bold individual, declares that all their meetings will be broadcasted live. He claims that they have to be as transparent as possible to make this project a success. Tyra, who is overlooking everything, thinks that the plan is bonkers, but nonetheless, he doesn't say anything. Soon, the AI, Solon, turns on the cameras and the meeting goes live on the air. As many millions of people listen in excitement, Maki delivers his first speech. He promises to make every single resident of UI City happy in one way or another. However, his first decision is a controversial one. He proposes that they abolish the city council, as it is using up a lot of money. Solon also concurs with the statement, and she shows various stats which reveal that the general population will be 4% happier if the city council is abolished. Despite this, Maki leaves the decision to the public. A voting poll is conducted, and over 70% of the people vote in favor of Maki's decision. This acts as the final nail in the coffin, and the city council is officially abolished. As the meeting goes on, Tyra fears that Maki will become a total dictator and rule the UA city with his brash decisions. But Solon has yet another solution to this. She proposes a general voting system, which will show 
the percentage of people that like Maki. If the percentage drops below 30% at any given time, he will be fired from his duties. Maki also likes this idea, and so his reign begins. That evening, he delivers yet another inspiring speech, which takes his approval ratings from 43% to over 50. But before he can sign off, he reveals that he is thinking of firing the government officers as well. This is because the AI is in charge of virtually everything, and she doesn't need everyone's assistance. As expected, the announcement doesn't sit well with the thousands of government officers in UA City. Hence, Maki's approval ratings drop to 41%. Tyra and some other ministers are equally disappointed by the idea, but they cannot do anything unless PM Washida himself intervenes. Later, the mayor of UA City, Maki, is at the one place where teenagers like him go, right up their own asses. I mean, school. After his classes are over, he meets Sachi, who also happens to study there. They chat for a while, and we get to know that Maki is an orphan who lost both his parents when he was young. When they reach outside, Tyra is waiting for them. At first, he takes Maki to a fancy store and buys him a new pair of shoes. The teenager, who has never received any presents throughout his life, gets emotional by the kind gesture. Later, the three head to a government store to conduct a survey. As soon as the employees notice Maki, they berate him for his harsh decisions and call him a dictator. The teenager tries to explain that it will reduce a lot of cost, which they can use in other sectors. He also asserts that in the next three years, their happiness index will rise by 10%. However, the angry employees are having none of it, and they scream at him to simply go away. Reluctantly, Tyra pulls him outside and explains that it is impossible to please everyone. Elsewhere, at the parliament, the Minister of Infrastructure, 25-year-old Honda, is having a meeting with an investor. They are planning to build a large shopping mall in the traditional market of the city. From their conversation, we get to know that this plan has been in the works for over a decade, but this time, Honda is confident that they will get it done. On the other hand, Maki and Sachi are walking across the city when they come across the same traditional market. Maki sees some protest posters there, which reveals that the locals are not happy with the shopping mall idea. Hence, to make them understand, he shows them a video about the advantages of the shopping mall. However, the locals are still not satisfied, as they fear that the new project will ruin the historical value of the place. These words move Maki deeply, and he starts reconsidering the idea. In the evening, he, along with the other cabinet members, conduct their regular meeting. The infrastructure minister, Honda, explains that he has approved the shopping mall idea, but to everyone's surprise, Maki rejects it. He mentions that the locals are not happy about it, as the construction will eradicate a large part of their history. In turn, he asks Solon to come up with alternatives. The latter, being the smartest AI in the world, comes up with three sustainable options. They are advanced, but traditional and convenient, all at the same time. Maki approves all three of them and conducts a poll to select one. Since the city is mostly filled with elderly, people. They select the most traditional one. The decision enrages the investors as well as Honda, but the locals are over the moon. Hence, the next morning, Maki's approval rating shoots up to 61%. Later that day, during the cabinet meeting, Maki again brings up the topic of firing government employees. He wants to free up some budget and use it in other sectors. He then asks Solon to come up with some good ways to carry out the process. In a matter of seconds, the AI comes up with three methods. Maki reads all of them and comes to the conclusion that he will go with the third one. It states that they will fire half of the employees, which will increase the happiness index by around 10% in the coming years. Once again, Honda opposes the idea and mentions that the fired employees will become jobless, but Maki promises to provide them with something. Unfortunately, the residents hate the idea and start downvoting him. To cheer them up, Maki explains that he will conduct an interview of all the government employees that will be fired by Solon. If they can convince him that they are useful, he will reinstate them. With this notice, the process begins. Solon carefully picks and fires thousands of employees. One of them happens to be Sachi's mom. The scene then cuts to the interview session where the teenager Maki listens to several grown-ups complaining. All of them say the same thing, that they are too old to learn new skills, because of which they won't get hired anywhere. Maki empathizes with them, but at the same time, he stands by his decision. The interviews go on for a month, and Maki attends every single one of them. He also meets Sachi's mom, who is one of the few employees to accept their resignation. By the end of the interviews, Maki's approval rating drops to 34%, but he hangs on.
That evening, Tyra takes Maki for a walk, and the two discuss their private lives. On being asked why he chose to be a politician, Maki starts explaining his past. He reveals that during his childhood, he was often bullied and misunderstood. He had no friends, and his parents left him at an early age. But one day, a girl named Yuki came into his life and made him feel better. The two became best friends and started spending most of their time together. But sadly, she died at the age of 10 in a tragic accident. Maki couldn't save her but he made a promise to change the country for good, where every person can live happily. Later, when the two reach the parliament, Maki suddenly collapses due to exhaustion. He is immediately rushed to a hospital, where the doctors explain that he will recover in a few days. Elsewhere, when Sachi doesn't find Maki in his room, she starts searching around. She finds a secret room behind his library, and upon entering, she sees something shocking. It turns out that Maki has created an AI version of his deceased friend Yuki. This is why he spends most of his time in the basement. In the next scene, Maki finally wakes up and finds Tyra next to him. The latter mentions that all the cabinet meetings will be postponed for a week. Until then, Maki can rest and reflect on some projects. However, after just two days, he gets back up and delivers a speech. Maki says that while he was sick, he realized that physical happiness is not the most important thing, but mental happiness is. So, he declares that all the citizens of UA City will get free psychological counseling from now on. This riles up the crowd, and so, his approval rating fires up. The same day, at the cabinet meeting, he discusses the new shopping mall. Realizing that UA City's culture and traditions are slowly dying out, Maki decides to make some reforms. He wants the shopping mall to have a distinct area where people can celebrate festivals. Additionally, he also wants a park, a garden, a nursery, and several other places which the elderly would like. This time, even the arrogant Honda supports him. However, there is one small problem. The area where the festivals are going to be celebrated is near the beach which is owned by an elderly businessman. He is not a fan of the new AI technology, so he doesn't want to sell his land. Hence, Maki decides to go to the library to learn about the old traditions. After hours of research, he, along with Honda, heads to the beach and approaches the businessman. As expected, the old man doesn't budge on his decision. Instead, he berates the boys for trying to change his city. Maki understands the man's concern and decides to give up. However, before departing, he leaves a pair of smart glasses, which have hundreds of videos of the traditional festivals. He asks the old man to give it a try. The latter acts like he doesn't care, but a few hours later, he gets bored and eventually puts them on. To his surprise, he sees the festivals which he grew up celebrating. He cries tears of joy as he relives his childhood days. On the other hand, Maki doesn't notice his assistant Sachi around, so he visits her home. Sachi's parents are elated to see the mayor in their house and offer him dinner. However, Sachi is still traumatized by what she saw in the basement. She cannot believe that he is created an AI companion of a deceased person. So, when she cannot take it any longer, she calls Tyra and expresses her decision to resign from her duties. She also reveals that she saw something in Maki's basement. Hearing this, Tyra and his assistant immediately search the place. They open the secret door and find Maki's AI companion inside. That evening, Honda and the other parliament members are having a BBQ party. When Tyra joins them, Maki takes him to a corner and asks if he found his secret room. Tyra doesn't say anything, and this confirms that he has learned about his AI companion. So, with a disappointed look, Maki apologizes and claims that he was simply trying to talk with his best friend. The next morning, Tyra's assistant, who has stolen some data from Maki's basement, finds out that the AI is modeled after a girl named Yuki. She died when she was 10, along with her entire family. It is revealed that their car was purposely drowned inside a lake, as Yuki's father had messed with some powerful people. On the other hand, Maki meets with Yuki and tells her that they can no longer meet with each other. If PM Washita finds finds out about this, he will immediately be fired. However, Yuki doesn't care. She seems to be aggressive and keeps telling Maki to stay with her. The latter tries to calm her down, but to no avail. Just then, Maki receives a call from Tyra, informing him that they have to attend an important meeting in Tokyo. This makes up the perfect excuse, and Maki departs without saying goodbye. But after he's gone, Yuki, who has now started functioning on her own, comes up with an idea. She calls Sachi and explains that they have to save the city before it's too late. Since since Yuki was killed without any fault, she blames the adults for it. Now, she wants to remove all the adults from UA City, and if possible, all of Japan. 
Sachi, being an innocent girl, obliges to help and arrives at the basement. Yuki asks her to put on the smart glasses and then shows her a video. In it, she explains how adults are harmful to their city and why they should be removed. For their mission, she wants Sachi to upload all her memories into the AI network of the city, Solon. Once again, Sachi complies and she heads to one of the three towers to upload the memories. And as soon as she does so, the entire city's network is hacked. Everyone's phones, televisions, and computers automatically start playing a video. In the video, we see a world where adults have gone extinct and children are in charge. Yuki also appears and says that the day will soon come. After this, she vanishes and Solon comes back to life. Following the incident, the public goes into an uproar. They are especially angry because their systems were hacked. So, to calm the situation down, Maki goes live on air. Instead of making up a story, he reveals everything as it is. He explains that the person who hacked Solon is actually an AI robot. She was his childhood friend who died when she was 10. Maki then profusely apologizes for the inconvenience, but this time, the public doesn't listen. They continue downvoting him until his approval ratings reach 29%. With this, his reign as a mayor finally comes to an end. A few days later, while Maki is at school, Sachi approaches him and apologizes for being easily manipulated. However, instead of being angry, Maki thanks her. He says that he is relieved to have resigned. The burden of ruling a city was starting to get into his brain. Maki then says that a 17-year-old should live as a 17-year-old, not an adult. Hearing this, Sachi is somewhat relieved. The movie then cuts to three years later. Honda has become the new mayor of UA City, while Tyra has become the prime minister of Japan. There have been a lot of reforms in the city, but the philosophies that Maki implemented are still the same. He will always be remembered as the first mayor of UA City. One evening, we see hundreds of people enjoying a traditional festival at the beach. It appears as if the businessman from earlier has sold his land, or maybe they just killed him. The movie ends as Maki Sachi